I was once asked, what is a soldier? Are they ruiners or saviors, monsters or heroes? Perhaps the reason this question is so awkward is because the answer is merely yes. That is what our story is about tonight. It is a tale known as Operation Sandbar. It was February of 1974. A team of United States Marines were on a small boat, plowing towards an isolated island off the Florida Peninsula. Their orders were simple. Locate a building on the island, infiltrate it, identify its purpose, and its creators. Then, if necessary, destroy it. The site had become very active over the past week, and given the tensions with the island nation of Cuba, it was deemed worth investigating. And so, five men rode out into the ocean in the dead of night, on a mission that, as far as anyone would ever know, never happened. They had worked together before in the Vietnam War. They had done unofficial missions before. They had faced hostiles before. And yet, nothing could have prepared them for what was waiting on that island. It looked so unassuming, just a lonely little island with a sandy beach and palm trees, which put all of them on edge. It was too normal. The sort of peaceful scene one would find on a postcard, which meant that whoever they were going towards was smart enough to hide their tracks. The boat drove right up to the beach, and in one solid motion, Clarence Lee, John Paul Williams, Duncan Brown... Tony Smith and Lucas Jones jumped out and dashed across the sand to the tree line. They couldn't risk using their flashlights, nor speaking aloud to each other. For painfully slow moments, they waited in the dark, pressed up against trees with nothing but the sound of the waves crashing. Finally, they believed that everything was in the clear, and proceeded into the island. It was almost midnight when they saw it, a simple, plain, one-story building, with no identifying marks. It didn't even have paint. They all looked back and forth to each other. There were no windows, only one door, and only a few hours before they would need to be at the extraction point. They agreed that they had to make their move. With Tony and Lucas taking point, they breached the front door and rushed in single file, then quickly spread out to fill and cover the room. Only... It was empty. No people, no furnishings, nothing at all, save for an odd clicking sound. Suddenly, Tony yelled as his arm came flying off his body and blood splattered everywhere. Lucas hurried to his side while the others scanned the room. There was no clear sign of what had even happened, until Lucas was suddenly lifted off of the ground. That was when they saw it. Or, more accurately, them. Ugly little humanoid-shaped things, with long talons for hands, large black eyes, and a wide circular orifice that could only be assumed to be a mouth of some kind. The strangest thing of all, though, was how they flickered, vanishing and reappearing. Lucas fell to the ground with a gaping hole in his chest, while more of those creatures flickered around the room. The remaining marines opened fire, but their bullets had no effect. The creatures simply weren't there when the bullets would have hit them. Worse yet, they moved to stand between the three marines and the only door leading out of the building. With no other way to go, and no way to reach their wounded comrades, they had to back up into a hallway, going deeper into the building. The next moments were just a blur of violence, 
The creatures materialized, only to swipe their clawed hands and then suddenly vanish. That was when a sickening, mocking laugh rang out from speakers on the wall, all but gasping for air. Holy shit, did you... Did you see how that bo- how that blood was just shooting out? Out of that guy? Oh man, I bet that hurt. And the other guy, the one that went up in the air, did you see the, the, the look on his face? That was wonderful. Clarence and Duncan looked around the hallway they were in and realized that there were multiple cameras watching them. They also realized John Paul was missing. All oh, right, right. You guys have probably been blowing up straw huts. Uh, so welcome back to civilization. We have these things called security cameras in the security system. Duncan aimed and shot one of the cameras. Smoke's bullet is for you, asshole. Oh, oh my. The cameras aren't the reason why you're in this mess. And it's also not the reason why your daddy didn't love you. Now, if you kind of didn't notice, we've already abandoned this place. So honestly, I was about to leave, but thanks for not showing up an hour later. Duncan took aim at the remaining camera, but Clarence grabbed his shoulder, then nodded down the hallway. Duncan looked and saw those strange creatures. They were just standing down at the far end of the hallway, glaring at them as they faded and flickered in and out. The two marines glanced at each other, then slowly started walking farther away from them. The man, watching the events from his control room, pulled the microphone away from his face and cursed. Then he quickly brought the microphone back. Hey guys, so uh, I know we've had our differences, but can you do me a favor and not go that way? You know, professional courtesy and all that. Duncan and Clarence kept walking down the hall, back to back, both flipping off the cameras as they went. Hey, come on, let's be a little bit mature in here. The man frantically checked the different screens in front of him, till he finally saw a lone marine going down a hallway. The hallway that led to his control room. The man quickly looked around the room and darted out of his chair. Meanwhile, John Paul slowly stepped towards a door. The creatures had stopped attacking, but he had no idea where the rest of his team was. He kicked the door open and stormed in with his gun level, but there was just an empty chair and a desk, and several screens mounted on the wall. They all showed different rooms or hallways in the building. John was looking at the screens when suddenly a heavy weight slammed into him from behind. He turned and pushed back against it, knocking the man out of the control room. John rushed forward, bringing up his gun again, but before he could fire, the man pulled a small revolver out from his shoe and fired a single shot directly into John Paul's head. The man laid on the ground for a moment. Huh, that actually worked. I'm about to remember that. With the marine dead, the man staggered to his feet and looked back in the hallway. Several of the creatures were standing there watching. Oh, now you show up. Thanks for the help, assholes. He spat at the monsters, but they loudly clicked back at him, and suddenly he lost his nerve and hurried back into his control room. Duncan and Clarence both heard the gunshot. They looked at each other and both knew they were all that was left. Together, they watched the camera on the wall, waiting for the mocking voice to return. Oh, sorry about that. I had to shoot a little bitch in the face. Uh, anyways, what are you guys up to? Still walking towards death? Cool, cool. The man suddenly found them on one of the screens and realized they were standing by a door which led into the basement. He cursed under his breath. So, um, I bet you're real mad about my little creatures off and your two buddies. At the front door, and me killing your little buddy. I mean, I would be ticked, even not hearing how I made him beg for his life. Oh, by the way, he totally offered me. Duncan shot the speaker, shaking with anger. He wanted nothing more than to strangle this man. But then he had a thought. If he and Clarence were so doomed, why was this man so antagonistic? It was possible that he was just that much of a loudmouth braggart, sure, but something seemed wrong. He didn't sound confident anymore. He sounded rushed. Duncan looked over to Clarence, who just nodded towards the door behind them, and Duncan smiled. He was trying to distract them. 
They were getting close to something, something the man and the speakers didn't want them going towards, something those creatures were trying to avoid. Why else did they stop attacking? And why else would the man suddenly become so adamant to provoke them? They both flipped off the camera again, then proceeded through the door, while the man cursed repeatedly. The door led to a staircase. Once again, standing back to back, the marines made their way down. What they found at the bottom of the stairs was like a nightmare. There were cages. Most of them had dead things inside. The smell of death was almost overwhelming, yet even it wasn't as bad as the sight itself. None of the bodies looked like any animal they had ever seen before. Suddenly, both of them heard a voice, simply whimpering, Help. Chills ran down their spines. The voice didn't sound like it came from anywhere in the room, but rather like it was echoing inside their heads. It spoke again, saying, Not combat. Solitarian. That was when they turned and saw it. A small, gray, skinny, human-like creature. It had thin, frail limbs with an oddly large round head. It was chained to the wall and stared at them with massive black almond-shaped eyes, similar to the creatures from the hallway, though that was where the likenesses ended. That it's an alien. You know what? Fine. Sure. We got yellow ghosts. Why not little green men, too? The word solitarian repeated in their mind several times, and finally Duncan reassured the creature. Okay. Okay, chill out, Sal. Just stay out of our heads, okay? The creature looked confused at them. The marines moved in and looked over the chains. It's pretty clear you're not friends with whoever is behind this place. Any idea who or what they are? The voice in their head replied, Surround. Yeah, no shit. They're all over the place. Now who are they? The creature, which they started to call Sal, looked frustrated. Then the voice answered in their heads, Enclose, cover, contain. Okay, never mind. Who are you? The voice responded, Sal Utarian. Duncan just rolled his eyes. Are there any other words to describe you? The voice answered, Doomed. Clarence couldn't help but smirk, while Duncan groaned. That was when Duncan had another thought. Wait... You're the reason those things didn't follow us, aren't you? Sal nodded, and the words, brief, tools, here, required, flashed in their minds. The marines looked around and saw a metal locker. It couldn't be that easy. Clarence started to pick the lock on the chains. Thankfully, it was a simple one. Meanwhile, the man in the control room was sweating bullets gathering up papers, turning off devices, checking his watch. It was almost time for him to get out of there. Of course, he couldn't leave those marines and their new friend behind. Then he smiled, remembering that he still had one trap left. The two marines looked at the locker. They looked down at the padlock, and then each other. Duncan commented, Looks military grade. Clarence nodded. Thank God for small favors. They then pried the door open using their infantry shovels. Inside the locker were several odd metal objects. Sal quickly reached for one that was a few inches long and tubular in shape. Was that a dildo? Sal just looked up at Duncan and shrugged, and then the word determined flashed in their minds. Please tell me that was meant to be a joke. Sal nodded, and then the Marines heard the words... Harmonic synchronizer. Reach through window. This pull to room. So we can shoot them? Sal nodded, and Duncan smiled while he checked to make sure he had a round in the chamber of his gun. Then Duncan noticed something odd in the locker. It looked almost like a small chicken egg made of metal. He picked it up, and Sal backed away. What's with the egg? Sal responded to him, bad egg. Very bad. Duncan took note of this, and how Sal seemed so upset by the egg. 
and decided it must be worth keeping around. After all, if Sal had a problem with it, maybe those creatures would too. And so, the three, with Sal in the middle holding up his synchronizer, made their way up the stairs. The creatures started to appear, but they were no longer flickering or fading. Some seemed dazed while others turned and tried to run away. There was something cathartic about being able to finally shoot these monsters. Yeah, not so dangerous now, huh, you little pricks? Yet all the while, the man in the control room kept his fingers crossed. Please, please, find it just a little more, you stupid mother... They weren't sure how long they moved through the halls, kicking in doors and checking rooms, till finally they came to a door that the man had to speak up again. Hey, uh, look, you went, you cleared the building, nothing left to find... Or shoot. In the face. Clarence didn't spare him a thought. He simply kicked open the door and the three rushed into the room. It was dark. The only light came from the open door, which suddenly slammed shut with a loud metallic clang sound. The man on the speakers burst up with laughter. Surprise, knuckleheads! I'm nowhere near this room. Mainly because it's where we kept... Whatever the hell is that thing is? Slowly... Lights in the room lit up, revealing a large metal object. The object shook and started moving. It stood on four powerful limbs with a strange, bulb-shaped body that appeared to have plants growing out of it. It let out a hideous noise like breaking glass, and a word flashed in the Marine's mind. Mockery. It rose one of its large legs and slammed it down, forcing the three to dart away. Duncan and Clarence opened fire but the bullets just thumped harmlessly against its metal body. Sal looked down at his device and started fumbling with it when the monster swung out its leg again and threw him across the room. He crashed against the wall with a sickening, bone-shattering sound. Clarence rushed over to the alien, while Duncan spat curses at the mockery. The bullets didn't hurt it, but it did hold their attention. It hissed, apparently getting annoyed, and moved towards Duncan. That was when Duncan had an idea. He reached into his pocket and pulled out that metal egg. The monster didn't react at all. Duncan cursed, but then he noticed a small curve on the egg's surface, roughly the size of a thumb. At this point, any idea was a good one, so he pressed his thumb against it, and the egg opened, revealing a small blue crystal. Suddenly, a bright blue light flooded the room. The mockery screeched and backed away. Duncan felt sick. Suddenly, everything was sore. He took one step, and it felt like his muscles were on fire. But as much as it hurt him, it hurt the monster much more. Its metal body started to glow, first a dull orange, then a bright red, and finally it became a bright white light, like a star. It looked almost as if it was softening, melting by the light. Duncan, meanwhile started to wither, becoming thinner and thinner, turning an odd gray color. He fell to one knee, still holding up the egg, keeping the light as close to the creature as he could, until finally he completely broke apart into dust, while the mockery melted into a mass of slag and burning leaves. Once Duncan was no longer putting pressure on the curve, the egg shut and the glow was gone. The man watching all this happen in the control room screamed bloody murder and started pushing any button on his desk that he could reach. Sal coughed, looking up at Clarence, who was in complete shock of what he had seen. It couldn't have been more than a minute, but every second was burned into his mind. The words, good man, sorry, flashed in his mind. Clarence looked down at Sal and then tried to pull the alien up to his feet. But Sal just twitched and shuddered in pain. The words, leave, escape, flashed in Clarence's mind, and suddenly a bright red light started to flicker all over the room. The door's lock loudly opened, and Sal held up his device and a small metal pendant with a triangular marking on it. Clarence took them, but when he did, his head snapped back. He was staring up at the ceiling with his mouth hanging open for a few seconds. Then he looked back down at Sal, with tears in his eyes. He was trembling. Sal just nodded, and then went limp. 
Slowly, Clarence stepped back from Sal's body, then turned and ran out the door. He expected the strange creatures to be everywhere, but they seemed just as lost and confused as he was. Clutching the device in one hand and his gun in the other, he rushed down the hallway, only shooting the creatures that were too close to him. He wasn't even sure if he was going down the right hallway, but he knew the general direction he needed to move to find the exit. That was when he saw someone sprawled on the ground. He stopped and realized it was John Paul. He couldn't have saved Sal or Duncan. He knew that, but he wasn't going to leave the others behind. Putting the device in his pocket, he grabbed John and heaved his body over his shoulders. Whatever that flashing red light was, it seemed to be enough to make the monsters want to leave. He hadn't seen any in a good minute or two. Clarence noticed that the voice over the speakers had also stopped. There was a part of him that was a little disappointed, actually. He would have liked to have seen that man's face, and then firmly cave it in. He managed to find the exit, and the bodies of Tony and Lucas. For some reason, Clarence felt anger well up in his chest. These things just killed them and left their bodies on the floor. These were good men. They deserved better. But he had to set his anger aside. He needed to get these men home, one way or another. Meanwhile, the man from the control room was frantically looking around the last box he had taken with him while he ran out the building. He looked up, then at his watch, and then back up to the island. Okay. Where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! Suddenly there was a loud blast, and a huge pillar of smoke and fire shot up to the sky, right where the building had been. Yeah! How's that? You bunch of stupid... That was when the man saw movement in the tree line. No! No! No fucking way! I threw monsters at you! I had you trapped! I killed your fucking bodies! I literally blew up a building on you! How are you not dead? Clarence looked up and saw the man screaming while standing in a small motorboat. He let John Paul slip off his shoulders, let go of Tony and Lucas then pulled out his service pistol and aimed. Yeah, right. You have to be a fucking dead-eye to shoot me with that pea shooter with this distance. Clarence fired once, and the man fell back in the boat. Ah, fuck, he's a dead-eye! The man clutched his shoulder where he had been shot. He had one last desperate trick he could play. He kicked the motor and triggered it to roar to life, and suddenly his boat shot off like a rocket. Clarence wasn't sure if he had killed the man or not, but he felt a ping of happiness having given him the bullet that Duncan promised. Then he heard a soft clicking sound. He turned and shot one time, hitting one of those ugly yellow monsters square in the head. He looked at his watch and took a deep breath. The things had regrouped. They had him surrounded. And there was still just over an hour before his pickup would arrive. There wasn't any point to counting the minutes, though. So instead, he picked up his gun and the gun of one of his comrades, and started counting bullets. The creatures, the bullets, the sounds of the waves and wind all melded together into just a hideous blur of sound, light, and pain. And yet, as quickly as it all started, Clarence found himself standing alone on the beach, with dozens and dozens of creatures' corpses all around him. That was when he heard the sound of another boat, he reached into his pocket and turned off the device, and all the bodies disappeared. After that, Clarence sat down with the bodies of his teammates and waited to finally go home. Meanwhile, the man groaned as he was pulled from the motorboat onto a yacht. He looked up and sighed when he saw who was waiting for him, though. Lawrence. The young, pale man just grinned. Look. Everything that matters is taken out of the building. The building blew up. The soldiers are dead. By the way, I got shot. Now, I know you don't care. Lawrence's grin grew only wider. Well, I'm sure they can just patch you up down below deck. Then, you're off to Amistad. You're going to oversee the completion of the new Peaksport facility, while I head over to Wyoming to get the guest of honor. The man just nodded and started walking below deck, when suddenly Lawrence grabbed his shoulder. But in the future, you really should be more careful. 
It'd be a real shame if all your hard work just blew up in your face now, Oscar. Donne, you taught him, Condemian. And threw him across the room. Ah, fucking the Jedi!